hello and welcome back i'm back with another exciting video for you and today we're gonna spend some time to learn how i created this amazing transition effect using geometry nodes all right then let's get right into it all right so the effect is pretty simple it is using an effector object to make changes into the original geometry plus you can just animate the effector object and it will create this amazing transition for you, including the slow motion effect that you just saw. Let's open up a new Blender file here. I'm gonna go to Geometry Nodes, click on New, and we've got a new Geometry Node setup here. We need a little bit geometry to work with it, so I'm gonna add Subdivide Mesh here, and we're gonna subdivide it six times. Let's create a way to only affect a certain part of the mesh and not, not everything. And one way we can do that is by having an effector object. So let's add a UV sphere here. We're gonna use this as our effector. And let's click on our cube and let's bring in the sphere into our geometry node setup. We're gonna change the object info to relative and let's add a geometry proximity node and it's gonna we're going to use this to understand the distance of our sphere relative to our cube so we can take this distance and uh, we can say if it is less than 0.2 then uh, do something and that something i would say let's delete some geometry here so we're going to say if it is less than 0.2 delete the geometry what i do want to do is i want to make sure that i'm deleting faces and also i don't necessarily want to delete it but i just want to keep only the section which is affected by this the way we do that is we can add a map range right before our geometry proximity and let's change this from 0 to 1 to 1 to 0 and now it automatically keeps the geometry within the range and we can again work with this and uh, increase it or decrease it to just affect the amount of geometry that is getting affected with the sphere the first thing we'll have to add is split edges okay and uh, we are going to make sure that we have a random value selected here uh, that is splitting the edges now you don't see anything right now uh, but that is because we also need to do a little bit more editing right after it so i'm going to use scale elements right after our split edges and uh, let's plug this in and let's bring this down a little so if you see now it's already creating an amazing effect here and uh, this looks pretty interesting add a little bit more thickness to our object though right so for that i can just use the extrude mesh and uh, this is way too much so we're going to bring it down to let's 0 0.1 now i somehow want my original mesh back as well right because i want to be able to show it in in its entirety well one way i can do that is i can add another delete geometry node right and uh, let's plug this geometry in here now currently we don't see anything and that's because uh, when plug this in now it is back to what it was but i want something that is opposite of this right so i can just add a node that is called not right after it and it's going to give me the inverse of the selection and there we go so we've got the remaining part of the geometry now i can just simply use a join geometry node and uh, plug this in and we get both of our geometry the one that is getting affected and one that is not so let's plug this into the original geometry let's see how it looks like i can simply move my sphere and this effect is getting uh, implemented everywhere and one another thing that i want to do is i want to uncheck this individual option let's also reduce the number of subdivisions because uh, the effect was way too much i think this looks better and to to show you how it looks let's also enable cavity we'll move it to world and bring everything up to 100 this is how the effect is looking like right now we are also going to add a little bit of animation into it right and one way we can do that is by using set position node so i can bring this in and let's use a noise texture to animate this I'll just add a subtract node right after it and subtract it by 0.5 and that just makes it correct now the noise is very high so i want to reduce it uh, to let's say let's go 0.6 i think that should be okay and let's change it from 3d to 4d and we're going to take this w output and plug it into the second now once i play this it 
is animating only the section uh, that is getting affected by our cube. So we can just bring this in and have the transition effect come into play. There's one more thing that you saw and that was uh, only a few faces were glowing, not everything was. And uh, the way I achieved that is uh, I first added a set material node here and I selected the material that I wanted. So let's go to uh, the render mode and uh, let's enable ambient inclusion, plume and screen space reflections. I'm also going to change the change the look to very high contrast. So I want to find a way where I only affect selective faces. Now, there is already a selection here that is this top selection that can automatically select the top faces of the geometry that got extruded. We can use that selection and we can create a new material here and let's change it to an emission material. Let's make it whatever color that you want to make it and I can just duplicate this, select that material in here. Now currently it's affecting everything but that's not what I want so I'm going to take the top section and just plug it in. Now again, it's it's affecting every face that is at the top and I don't want that. So I can simply bring in a random value node, change it to Boolean and we can add a node that is called and. So basically this node works something like a multiply node we use in math and it just makes sure that both of this condition are met and only then it's going to go ahead and affect anything. You can just simply play with the probability to just increase or decrease the number of faces that are lighting up and uh, I can just go to the original material and I can play with that as well as so maybe make it a little metallic or uh, reduce the roughness extract etc but yeah i guess that's about it it's it's that easy to create this effect and uh, all you gotta do is just make sure this render is disabled for the effector object and uh, that's about it have fun with it play with it let me know if you liked the video i really hope you did if you did please like share and subscribe and i'm gonna see you in the next one